Trustees, uh, for the record, today is August the 28th, 2018. It's now 7 p.m. We do have a quorum present for the meeting. I call this meeting to order. Ms. Diasas will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and Mr. Rector will lead us in the invocation. Everyone, please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Father, we come at this hour to thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. I want to thank you, God, for just watching over our staff and our students, realizing this time last year we was in a different situation. But, Father, we know that you're good. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for everything, for all the resources that you have provided us with. And then, oh God, I just want to thank you and ask your blessings as we go through this meeting this evening, this special call meeting. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mr. Director, Ms. Diasis. Our first item on the agenda is the public meeting, uh, which will be conducted by Ms. Cook on our proposed budget and proposed tax rate. Yes, thank you. Um, tonight, we are agreeing to, we begin with the public meeting um, in which we will be sharing information um, and then uh, the open for questions or comments. Um, I'd like to begin with an overview of, of what we've been working on for Past several weeks. Uh, when we last met and spoke to you about the budget, we brought some pretty grim numbers to you, working with the information we had at the time. Um, Stan Perry and I have been working together, and, and a joy she has been to work with uh, to work through a very difficult situation. As we're all aware, as uh, was just mentioned in the prayer, it was just a little over a year ago uh, that this community suffered greatly. Um, and Physically, uh, it, it seems like everything's coming back together, but we're still in the process of, of recovering uh, financially. And it will take some time uh, for us to be able to do that. Thankfully, um, there is hope, there is assistance, uh, and we're, we're uh, um, uh, taking hold of everything that we can uh, to upright this ship and have us moving and sailing on smooth waters, hopefully again soon. As we close out the 17-18 budget, um, a budget that was uh, $15 million approved on an uh, ABA of 1660, 1,660 students. With the hurricane, the actual ABA uh, ended up being 1,354. That is quite a bit of loss. That, with that loss, it, it was, and these are some numbers we gave several weeks back, but I wanted to kind of recap. That put us upside down $3.3 million uh, looking at closing out. As we began to investigate, the state did allow, allow whole harmless, uh, which would, uh, from we figure at least 1,606, we could count towards ADA, which would then bring us to approximately uh, only a deficit, only, that's all relative, I guess, of 1.6, which cuts it almost in half. So very thankful for that. But according to what Cheryl and I have been reading and studying and talking with those at TA, um, it looks like it should be more of an average of our past three years before the hurricane, uh, which would put us at 1633 ADA, which would cause us to only have a loss of 27 students from what you had when you adopted the 1718 budget. We had not figured it all the way down to that, but you figured we were at 1.6, would that cut in half again? Hopefully, it's looking like around to all the safe, a safe number of around a million. So to drop from the 3.3 million deficit down to 1 million deficit approximate, and those figures will be coming out for the key, say, late fall. First week of September, they post a near final So we'll have that closer. We want to go ahead and give you an update because when we left you before, we left you with the thought that we were going to have to pull over three million dollars from fund balance to just close out the year. So we're very thankful that the state has been true to their word and that they are working to hold the districts that suffer, to hold them harmless. So with that, um, that put us in a much better place as we begin to project for the new year's budget. Then Friday, we received a wonderful email 
that we are recipients of emergency impact grant in the amount of 2.3 million more dollars. Um, that can be used for uh, cost for the 17-18 year uh, from personnel to transportation. There was a, a list of things that we can use that for. We're currently working together to read through that material. We'll be making a phone call to the state to ensure that we're doing it correctly as we access those funds. So with that, that should be, we should be able to upgrade and be back in the black um, is, is, is where we're, we're leaning toward uh, as all this falls into place. Uh, we also received a Rebuild Texas grant in the amount of $200,000 that we'll be using to offset some costs for some supplies and so forth that uh, need to be in place. So with that said, I, I, tonight we do not have an exact number of what it looks like because we need to wait till the state pushes all that through and we finish all the grant uh, processes. Um, but I feel very confident tonight to tell you that as we close out the 17-18 year, um, uh, that it, we're in much better shape, uh, and if all of this uh, falls into place as we believe it will, we should not have to dip into fund balance to close out the year. So that is such a blessing, and we're very thankful for that. So I'm going to stop there because I know that was a lot really fast. Uh, and then, you know, and I, these are numbers we've talked about before, but they're, I'm putting a new twist on that. So any questions? The 2.3 million, the state, is that a given or that's a, under certain standards? No, we have received, that has been allocated to our district and then we are to fill out another application and all that application, as I pulled it up, is basically how we're going to allocate our funds or obligate the funds in the district. Are we going to use it towards personnel? Are we going to use it for transportation? What were some of the other things on the list? There was like eight. And that was for last year? So yes, ma'am. Yes. You're basically, you know, she, she will be going back, Cheryl will go back into the books to reallocate these funds in place of the general funds or, or fund balance that was used uh, for any cost last year. So that doesn't take into consideration, that doesn't take into consideration our deductible that we'll be looking towards FEMA to be reimbursed for on our insurance claim. We should be receiving our deductible. It's all said and done with FEMA. But that's separate from what that's we're talking That's separate, yes. So with that said, that will, um, should make us whole on that piece. Of course, there's many pieces here. This is not talking about the bond or insurance and all of those things. So as we began to look at the 18-19 budget, um, we um, felt a little more hopeful as we were beginning to um, close out or bring to the, you the proposal of what we want to look at. So looking ahead, of course, we're still dealing with a loss of ADA. Um, and um, our numbers are looking much better um, as we move forward. Um, we ended last year um, with 1,504 students. Uh, for the first day of school yesterday, we had 1,483 and as of today, we have 1,518. So as of the second day of school, we are now above where we ended school last year. We are very, from the conversations that our principals are having and those in the community and so forth, we are, are pretty confident this is not where it stops, that there are more students that are coming back. Uh, we had quite a few that moved that uh, come back this year as transfer students so knowing their homes will be finished in September, October, November, wanted their children to go ahead and get started in the district and not have to, to move schools. Um, so some uh, were forward thinking in that way and have already done some, taken care of it in that matter. Um, I believe there's many other families out there that are waiting for their homes to uh, to be ready to be moved back in. And a lot of that may have to do that didn't couldn't drive their children over here as transfers. Um, so our ADA, uh, there's an uptick there, which is very exciting to see for the school district and for the community. That's one of the big things we look at when we're building the budget. The other thing is our the values that we have, taxable values, and as you know, we already told you that we had a loss there, um, which amounted to around $610,000. So as we look at, we gave you that those first
first in that budget workshop, we were looking at um, very conservatively, uh, as we look forward, looking at an ADA of 1,350 students. Uh, and when we were figuring that with uh, our current tax rate of 1.03%, that was still just doing a, just basically taking last year's budget and moving it over and not changing anything, that was going to put us at about $3 million deficit. Um, then when we discussed with you the option, which you're considering tonight, which is to raise under um, tragedy that has occurred in this year following, you can raise your tax rate uh, up to 1.17%, uh, and we discussed that as being a possible option to help uh, defer some of the cost and help keep us running smoothly as a district. Um, so with the 1350, with that increase, if that is approved, um, it put us at the latest number, Cheryl figured, and we had those in your handouts, of, uh, and Cheryl's going to go into this in much more detail. I'm just giving a big overview to catch everyone up. Uh, that put us where it would be down to 1.9 million deficit. That's at the 13.50. At the 13.50. But then, as we started seeing our, how our registration was going, which, by the way, I applaud everyone that had a part in that. That was a wonderful event and very helpful uh, to us, and we're going to continue to make that even better. Um, we feel, Cheryl and I sat there and we looked at the numbers, we looked at where we were, we looked at the registration, and both of us are very frugal and very careful. We're, I could tell we would not be the type that would go gambling because we don't, uh, we don't like to take <laughs> big chances. So we were very uh, cautious as we moved forward, but after we figured it up, we felt comfortable to propose moving the forward with a budget with a 1,400 ADA. And remember, when you figure the 1400, and that's something Cheryl had to remind me, correct me if I get this wrong, that's not the actual student count. That is, you take your student, actual student numbers. So um, I think we were figuring it like at 1500 students, actual bodies in the chairs, then you multiply it times your attendance rate. And ours has been averaging around 93%, so we use that as a, uh, a starting point. Um, but of course, an area that we're gonna all be working on to increase because we don't want to be at 93%, but we did it conservatively. So at 1,500 students times 19, 93% attendance rate, that gives you a 1,395 ADA. So when we figured that, we rounded it to 1,400. So that's saying that if we just sat at 1,500 students for our count in this process, you can see we're already at 1,518. So I feel very confident that we'll meet that. And I, I really, and of course, I continue to be a Pollyanna. I, I, I believe that, you know, we're going to far exceed that. So we, with that, that's where we're, you've seen your paperwork. We're looking at 1,400 ADA with a, if you do the tax rate increase for this one year only, that brings us down from that 3.1 million deficit to 1.7. So quite a difference with those pieces in place. So that is the framework we came at as we started building this budget. And um, I, it, from looking and reading and talking to people at TA, I do believe there's going to be more hold harmless assistance, uh, other opportunities for us to, uh, to go uh, after grants and so forth. So I feel very confident that we're going to continue to whittle away at that. But we don't have that currently. Those are hopes and wishes and, and, uh, and so forth. So we have to build a budget still very cautiously because if you want to be good uh, stewards of the top taxpayers' funds, I mean, if you go out and say, uh, we're going to increase this tax rate, you know, that's, that's a burden. Um, and so we want to make sure that we're being very careful about everything we're doing. So we're trying to look at this from every avenue. So with that said, that's how we came at building the budget, knowing that we are going to close out last year's budget in a much better place than we thought. Uh, and then moving forward, where we've already been able um, to uh, take this uh, these numbers down. And as Cheryl goes through it, she'll show you some other places where we, we've absorbed uh, and, and so forth to, to uh, make it happen. And then we have several proposals here looking at it, and we can talk about that as we continue to go through it. Any questions? I was, I'm going to refer to my computer.
comparison from one and from last year's budget to this year's budget. Um, and we left everything the same except in pay. And I wanted to point out under payroll costs that are the very first function, it shows that we were able to reduce payroll costs by 161,000. That is, there were, uh, we're looking at nine teaching positions that we were not going to fill. Um, there was some extra positions that we didn't fill last year. They're still sitting there, so we cut um, like two monitor positions. We still have enough monitors, bus monitors, to uh, take care of all of our routes. And then as you go down each function, um, there is a little increase. That's not really <coughs> to pay increases because those are, are what we pay. Um, there was a program error in our software and it underfunded our TRS by <coughs> almost $240,000. So we needed to uh, correct that in this year's budget. So actually, the payroll cost in function 11, we actually reduced payroll around $400,000, 450. But when you add 240 back, uh, the net effect was 161 uh, short. Um, another major uh, position that we cut um, is one of the nursing positions we never filled one of the positions that we lost uh, and we decided that this year we probably, we, we, we got by, so this year we would go ahead and sacrifice that position. Um, basically, it, it's the same budget as last year, other than just a few salary changes. Um, also, the function 11, that's with all the old employees that left us out and then the new employees that we brought in. Um, those, all those changes have been made in the already. I did also, in the last page, uh, the payments to other governments where we have to pay appraisal, the appraisal district. Um, we were underfunded last year by about five thousand dollars or five hundred dollars, and I didn't want to take a chance that we overdraw that account, so I'm adding a little bit there, five thousand. That's on page eight. But other than that, uh, it is what it is. So if you have questions, uh, let's answer. The uh, two hundred forty thousand dollar TRS error. That was a software glitch. software company again. There, there are some would love to go ahead and change, uh, but right now that's uh, a cost that I didn't want to put in this year's budget to try and change software. So to be candid, was that an input error or was it a glitch error? No, we should double check what we put in. We don't understand what Nina's skip or looked over or what we're in the process of checking that out. I just compared what this year's budget was projecting for TRS, and I looked at the actual numbers that we were actually having to fund um, to pay out to TRS, and I decided to manually add that back in because it, once again, did not include, there's, what, what it is, is the teachers, we pay every teacher above the state minimum. And because the state has a state minimum that you're required to pay all teachers. And we abandoned that scale a long time ago. But we have to calculate pay as it actually is. But the way Texas funding and financing and all the software has, it looks at the state minimum salary and it does a comparison with current salary, and there's a difference. For some reason, the computer is not picking up that difference. So 
was a programming error. So two questions. What level of competence do we have as a district? The software system going forward, I mean, $240,000 is a quarter of a million dollars. I mean, it's, not, mm -hmm. it's not change we have sitting around. So we don't have a level of competence. What assurances has the software company made to us to get this corrected so we don't have this in the future? We're just pointing that out to them so they, okay. they haven't actually come up with an answer for us yet. So it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. But we're aware of it, so next year we'll know the we plan. I mean, the budget this year, we've got it planned in there for that already. I've got it annually added in. Okay. We take care of that. That's already I'd like to request that at some point after we have a resolution from the software company that we have be updated at some future point. I'd like to take you back to that, though. We've got more than one piece of software in the district. We got more than one piece of software in the district, right? This is the accounting software. I understand that, but I know how computers work too. But if I was to say that some other program, whether it be on grading or graduation numbers or whatever, there's not a glitch in those programs. We have anybody looking at those programs, comparing, make sure there's not a glitch in any of them. I'm talking about general, overall. Yes, the, the Texas, we have our police numbers for are constantly checking the attendance and all the numbers that are input. So you're saying there's a system check periodically yes. throughout the year to check those numbers? Yes. Oh, it's not $245,000 again. No. The other question I have on function 21 is it did not replace curriculum. Okay, I was just wanting to make sure. So with, with the spreadsheet that's before us, will you discuss the budget using a 1480A and then the three options that we have? On the last page, yes. where I got the first, um, the first, the top part of that section is what our budget would look like if we use the 1350A. <coughs> And the first column under budget, the very first 15,772 is this actual budget worksheet that we have. It has no step raises, it has no raises whatsoever. The second line is it contains the step raises that are already programmed into our system. Everyone that is on a step, which mainly is the teachers, our care professionals they're all on a step. They would roll automatically. There are uh, about 15 to 20 employees that have maxed out those steps, which we were going to have to fix that, which we were adding an additional step just so we could get this year taken care of. Um, in that, also, the 16 million free that did not get raises for admin. Last year, admin and central office got no raise. And this year, if we don't get raises, it will be two years in a row that all of the admin and um, central office personnel did not get a raise. So we were trying to give you an idea. If we did a one and a half percent for those people <coughs> that aren't on a step, um, what that would cost the district. And then the bottom line of 16 million 30 budget um, is with a 2% increase. Uh, the one and a half percent mimics like our steps. It comes really close to what the steps are increasing uh, between each step. That's what the budget 
budget and then the revenue in the middle was based on the 1350 ADA and then the deficit is what the deficit would look like with those increases in budget according to the 1350 ADA. And the bottom section is doing the same thing except it's the increase in income for the 1440 ADA. And all of this is factored in with the tax rate increase at 1.17. Yes, yes. Both of these. You can add a six hundred and ten thousand dollar deficit to all of these deficits Without that. if you did not have the, the tax increase. An In additional. In addition, yes ma'am. So for clarification purposes at, at one point, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, it was my understanding that the state yearly did a step increase for our teachers, which was mandated. It was it was that question the district had to follow it. and then we had an option a local option to do a local increase if we wanted to is, is that correct um i'm not sure exactly how i'm the state has a state minimum pay scale and those steps that are on that scale yes if we had adopted and kept their their pay scale every teacher that is on a step actually rolls up to the next step. We're still doing that, but we have our own pay scale because um, we wouldn't get employees. 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 We wouldn't get So we adopted, we threw that out a long time ago. So with the steps, yes, we do roll those steps. So the teachers basically are guaranteed a step increase as long as they have a next step. But if we freeze our local increase, then there won't be any step increase there whatsoever. There will be a step increase. Yeah, the, the, the scale is for, for your, or I should say it's for a roll up, but it's not, the state doesn't like send us money just for those steps. That is a local government's decision. So when, so that's why we're bringing this to you as, as you know, in this manner, because so that it's clear that if, you know, and did, you know, as a governing board, you have that option when you're doing the budget to freeze the steps, meaning that no one gets anything. Teachers don't roll up to their next level. No one gets anything. Uh, there's also an increase in the insurance that's occurring this year. So anyone that is, uh, receives any insurance, they will basically go in the hole with, you know, I just, you know, I just think it's good for y'all to understand there's not an, you know, automatic um, giving that they're going to give you. That's something you have to decide as a board. That's why we gave you these options so that you see to do those steps on our pay scale that we have to approve in order to do that and the 1.5% or 2% for those that are not on a step scale. Um, that's what it costs you or costs us to be able to do that. I get the 1350, but we're going off of a 1400. Yes. So this decision needs to be made for the bottom line, yes. not the middle. Yes. Right? Correct? Right. Okay. I think she was we were putting that just to show Just to Yeah, yeah I just want to make sure I'm 1350 all along. So we wanted to show you okay. just, just with 50 more, the difference that it makes. And if we get 50 more than that, you know, it continues to whittle away through that period. Our students coming back is so important in so many ways. Mm -hmm. oh, attendance in general. And attendance, very much so. Every percentage point of like yes. attendance helps us generate more revenue there. Not to mention, it helps in accountability and, and us just being able to teach students. Last question on the paraprofessional category of employees. Does that include maintenance workers and custodians, or does that exclude them? When, when we talked about the 1.5 for not step employees. Okay. Maintenance, that we do have an internal pay step. In fact, I think with the handout, uh, there's an extra handout that we brought to you. If their scale is in here and they're automatically get a step. So there won't be any employee classification that's excluded from the increase if we approve it. If you do that, yeah, the one in that one. Uh, 
think uh, something that's important to note is as we all listen to the news, we hear what some of our surrounding districts are doing. It's not anything new that we've faced over the last 15 or 20 years that we've been here. Um, unfortunately, we don't sit in a big industrial area where we have a lot of industry with tax rate that can make us wealthy. So we've always faced that challenge. And I believe that's the reason we've gone to increasing the steps that we've done to be more competitive. Um, I can sit here and tell you that it doesn't leave really a good taste in my mouth to be looking at a deficit budget, but in light of where we're going to finish the 17 18 school year, it sure does present a different light on what we're looking at. Um, in addition to the, the theme alone that's out there that's available to us, um, it's not an easy decision to sit here and, and make for these increases considering where we're at. But two or three weeks ago, it looked a lot grimmer than it does today. Well, and it's, it's, this is a difficult place to be in because we're still trying to recover. And so it's a balancing act of ensuring that, like I said, that we're good stewards of the taxpayers' funds, that we use them wisely, um, and but at the same time, we're also trying to continue to move these districts forward because we don't want to stall out. There are great things going on here. We've done tremendous things in the midst of tragedy. Um, and so as we're moving forward, we want to make sure that we're able to recruit and retain the best teachers. And retain is important because, you know, they have to, you know, send their kids to college and put food on their table. And so if we're going to be competitive, we have to maintain that balance as close as we can, even in the midst of hard times. Uh, it also is a message that you send to your staff. Uh, you know, uh, you're in, it's, it's very, it can be very encouraging or it can be very, very deflating to them. Of course, they understand they're all suffering too. So there's so many things to think about there as we manage the financial side and prepare our district to continue to rise up on the academic. Board have any other questions on the budget? The uh, the evaluation and the property tax evaluation is is, is do you have included in that that uh, the property you know that uh, property is probably going to be devalued if you you know they're not going to be as high as they were last year because uh, you know most people have got uh, their house the property taxes are going to be lower because the house you know, the house will be valued. So is that included in here as well on the, on the income the tax the property tax? To cover that, because um, it should just kind of offset a little bit. Because again, you know, the, the, the property is valued down, so they're, they're basically they absorb some of that from last year. So there, there won't be a big increase in taxes. Which should be the most people that protest. Um, one thing that I do want to point out, and um, we are part of the meeting is to discuss the tax rate. Um, the proposal of, of increasing to $1.17, it is just for one year. Next year, we have to drop it back down to the dollar three. Next year, since we don't have the luxury of keeping the tax rate up, if our values don't go up, we may realize that big deficit next year. Um, I don't think it'll be the 610000 it's going to take a while for all that property to be rebuilt or restored. So just just as a, an idea, to keep it back in the back of your head for next year. Any other questions on the budget information? to look at bringing some in under 
under non-traditional ways, which are degree, for example, to have uh, someone uh, has a degree in Spanish but is still completing their certification fees. Um, so they're very legal, very qualified to teach Spanish as an example. Um, those districts that are district of innovation, you have that option to um, certify them as a board under under those circumstances. We don't have that option at this current time, so we're having to bring them in as substitutes uh, in order to meet the needs of our students. And this is the kind of grave need. I think there's several area districts that we were all fighting over, you know, one person <laughs> that's out there. So with that said, when we bring these people in, whether they're degreed or certified in other areas and we can, we can put them into these hard to fill areas, they are taking on the responsibility of the teacher. They are required to do the lesson plans, do the grading, and do, do everything as the teacher uh, is doing. And so uh, we uh, have added this as part of our proposal, as part of the budget package uh, at this time to add um, the part where if they're long-term, uh, whether degreed or certified for hard to fill positions, uh, that we pay them at a rate of $100 a day. Um, in the future, we're going to, we would like to look at the entire substitute pay scale. But at this time, we felt like we would just address that because that's an immediate need. So um, I want to bring that to your attention. Substitutes to, because we can't fill the positions or substitutes because the teachers want time off? Or what's the definition of substitute? Especially when you're substituting for 15 consecutive days. It's, I, to me, is I just want a couple of days off and you need to fill the, the room. What's a well, substitute for 15 days? Because they're, they're out taking of pregnancy, a illness. It's like uh, those that have gone home, yeah. medical leave, um, pregnancy, things like that. They're gone for you know quite a few weeks, six weeks. Um, or we have some of these positions that we do not have. Uh, a person to fill it, and so we're hiring a long-term sub while we still continue to look or get this person certified to fill that position. And how common is that in this district? Um, uh, how many did we get? We don't have, um, since I've been here, I think we're talking two that we're looking at right now. That are going to, that two, we're starting the school year and it's hard to substitute for to fill areas. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's concerning. to other districts in the area are we are we just are you trying to beef us up to can be compatible to get these yes. people yes yes we yes well in, in one of the other factors i think in one of the positions that we were looking at correct me if i'm wrong it wasn't some was just a substitute it was a teacher that was coming from out of state and had to get certified here so there was a, a process that she would have to go through so she, it was a degree yeah. first so we can't bring them in under the certified status as a teacher they don't, do not meet those requirements. We feel after interviewing them that they are qualified to do what certified. needs to be done. They just have not finished all the pathway of paperwork. Once they complete, and we're working with them, getting them to take their test, doing all, jump through all those hoops that have to occur uh, and so that they they will no longer be considered a substitute. That's the only way we can bring them in legally. Yes, it, it's all districts are having to be as creative as possible under the policies and procedures that are allowed um, to get people in classrooms. And we're, you know, we feel really good about these that we're bringing in under this and these hard to fill areas. Uh, it's it's not that they are not quality people and quality 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 teachers. They just don't have that piece of paper. Which is very important. I don't want to discredit that. So many of us work very hard to get that piece of paper. Um, but um, that's why eventually I'd like to bring back to you the option to talk to you about the district innovation because that does allow districts uh, more local control uh, where you can truly look at candidates on their face value and not just on um, the certain pieces that TEA has 
talking more about what you need as a local district. Well, that and the fact that several districts, a uh, high majority of districts, have adopted the district yes. of innovation, so it would be worthwhile for us to look at Yes, we would prefer to be able to do it on, you know, the way it's all laid out, but it's just not rolling out that way. And our first objective is to ensure that we get the best people we can possibly find in that classroom uh, and then get them to that certified status as quickly as possible. Are there any questions on the proposed budget or proposed tax rate? At this time, I'll ask for public comments on the proposed 2018-19 budget attachment. Anybody like to speak? We have to sign up, sir. Okay. Oh, that's why I signed up. Right. Ms. Masterson? Yes. Okay. You can come to the podium, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> you can come to the podium. <coughs> I have a big boy. <laughs> My name is Jay Loretta Masterson. I live at 120 Misty Lane. Aransas Pass. I've been a taxpayer since July 1977. And um, a first place, I want to thank all of you for all your hard work, for your volunteer efforts to be on the board. I um, have been in the education business in the private sector. Okay, I'm not in the education business in your area. I've been a, also a, a Sunday school teacher and a director of religious education. But the major thing I'm here about is to have you understand that there are other alternatives than what you're being able to think about, okay? One of the things that I, I work with the Coastal Bend Community Foundation, and there are many of us who want to help both governments and school districts, and there is method, there are methods within the CBCF to have you be able to get more funding for your teachers through awards and bonuses and by having an educational foundation at minimal cost. That's the first thing. Second thing is, is that I think you're prisoners of an ADA. That shouldn't be the mechanism whereby you think about funding. And it bothers me a lot. We're getting ready to go into a legislative session. I uh, look at what J.M. Lozano was working at with uh, Premont and the turnaround that was done there. I'm also looking at what John Paul II did in terms of having corporate sponsorships for different departments. We have to look at Aransas Pass as a jewel, not as a, oh, by the way. One of the things that's really important is that you've got a lot of gold collar workers here. People have been working in the oil industry for years, okay? Their bosses, their companies, their clients are all potential assets for you, especially if you provide a tax deductible way for them to help you. And all I'm saying is don't think it's 600K is nothing to an, oil, to an oil industry. They spend millions on one little box. 600K is not worth your having the negative effects for with the taxpayers. Okay, some of us, my husband and I are still in the workforce, uh, we can, that, that's not as big a deal to us. People are on fixed incomes, and it makes a black eye. I don't care if you say it for one year or not. If it's only for one year, do a certificate of obligation. I'm sorry, it's not, it's not a big enough thing to make all the ruckus and the negativity that would happen. I'm offering to tell you that I will personally work with anybody here. I worked for the Council of Governments for 16 years. I'm a serious person. I don't make volunteer offers easily. But I'm serious about saying that you deserve to have a chance to think about doing some things differently, getting some corporate sponsorships, working with having an educational foundation, and funding pieces of your work without depending upon whether or not two kids miss school or not. That shouldn't matter. Your foundation of your operating expenses shouldn't be so fragile. And you are doing a fantastic job within a very limited framework. I'm just saying blow apart the framework and think in terms of how you can do a public-private partnership, how you can deal with providing mechanisms whereby vocational education isn't looked at as a second-class a second mechanism, but rather a way
to an avenue for 100 to $150,000 a year jobs. That's what we're looking at. And so I'm, I'm hopeful. My husband's been in the petrochemical business for 43 years, okay? I have been working for 40 some years and I worked half of my time with bureaucracies. And one of the things that's really sad is that people who work in bureaucracies have, have a prison that they live in where they're having to deal with regulations for everything. So sometimes you gotta be able to say, all right, we're gonna go a different route. And I'm asking you to look at possibly getting waivers. One of the things that happened over in um, the Fremont area is they got waivers for certain kinds of things. This is not a discussion that you can you know, sit down and just, oh, whip, 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 let's get this out. No, I'm talking about a process that I believe, and many of you have been here for years, trying to help our town. Our town has been blessed with having consistent volunteer support. It's been fantastic. I think what we need to do is to provide better tools for these administrators to be able to solve problems without worrying about 600K. I'm sorry, that's not a big enough number to screw everything else all up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate your passion. Oh, I have a passion. <laughs> I know that. Are there any other public comments? Was there a Arizona? If there are no other public comments, that will end our public meeting and we'll move into our regular board meeting. Agenda item number three is to con consider and approve the 2018-19 budget. As recommended by administration, so I'm assuming we went through a process to give us all the information that could possibly be out there and give us the different options and it's now time for us to choose the option that we want to approve. So just to summarize, um, based on the information that Ms. Cook provided us using a budget using 1488, with no raises, no steps, uh, the budget amount would be 15,772,614. Revenue for the year would be 14,000, 14 million, excuse me, 59,284 with a deficit of 1,713,330. Option two is to raise one steps at 1.5 for non-step employees. Budget of $16,003,361 with a revenue of 14,059,284. Deficit 1,944,077. Option three is to raise two, the steps at 2% for non-step employees. Budget 16,030,575. Revenue of 14,059,284. With a deficit of 
giving or not giving a raise. So I, with that being said in front of us, I would like to propose that we take the 1,400 ADA and the steps and 1.5% Okay, and, just and work hard at that proposal. Just, just for clarification to make sure, question to, to Ms. Stansbury, if we do the 1.5, that includes teachers and par paraprofessionals. That does not include our administration and our central office staff, correct? It does or does, it does not? not? It does include, it does include, include everyone in the district. Okay. 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 So I have a motion by Ms. Diasis to approve raise number one step at 1.5, a budget of $16,30,361, revenue of $14,059,284 with a deficit of $1,944,077. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Mr. Monac. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I have a few comments I'd like to make after that vote. I'm sorry. I just I wanted to ask a question. And you, you can come back to the podium. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> okay. heartened by the money that was made available for the end of your last year. I was curious about, does this particular body uh, periodically consider amendments to your budget should the income increase that would cause you to not deal with this? If that was the case, when you're packaging this idea to the taxpayer, if you can indicate that there will be modifications should additional revenue come in, if you're, you know, I understand there's a lot more money to be coming down the pipeline from other entities that I'm working with. And I, I'm just I'm just saying you're looking at potentially another 500 grand coming in in the next year easily, okay? So I, you know, I'm, just, uh, I'm just trying to, to figure out if this is a way that you can package the idea to the taxpayer. I'm gonna answer this two ways, but with no disrespect. No, Number one, we, we have the, the, the budget on the agenda for, for a final vote. We've already had, listened to public comments. Um, what I can do is have the superintendent visit with you on that. I, I can't answer your question because that wasn't specifically listed on our agenda. Okay. I, I don't want to violate the other no, meeting. No, no, I, I, read, I readily understand. It's just that it seemed to me that you had a lot of positive news that are very, very, very recently yes, that would be very difficult for you as a government body to react to and since it was that was the case, I was hoping that you would be in a position to revisit. That's all. Thank you. I just had a few observations I'd like to make. Uh, over the last year, concern, concerning our budget, our financial impact caused by Hurricane Harvey, I think it's important to put into perspective the massive catastrophic disaster that the hurricane caused that's not new news to anybody sitting here because we've dealt with it for the last year. Uh, but just for the record, according to one estimate, Hurricane Harvey could end up being the costliest natural disaster in U.S. history. Conservative estimates have it at $190 billion. That exceeds the combined loss of Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Sandy. Locally, Hurricane Harvey caused damage to all of our campus facilities that resulted in an insurance claim of approximately $20 million. With regards to our insurance claim, this impacted us financially as the district had to expend $1.3 million out of our fund balance to pay the insurance deductible. Additionally, immediately after the landfall of Hurricane Harvey, the Board of Trustees approved an emergency resolution to continue paying our employees for the time period our campuses were closed. This was the right thing to do in order to ensure our staff and our families were taken care of. I believe our decision to invest in our employees impacted us financially as the district expended approximately $1 million out of our fund balance to pay payroll during this period. I know our employees were grateful for our quick action to ease their fears of not being paid during this catastrophic time. 
Lastly, Hurricane Harvey displaced hundreds of families from our community. The direct impact on our ADA resulted in a loss of student enrollment from approximately 1660 students from 1,350 students. As we all know, this resulted in a loss of ADA funding from the state and has impacted us financially. So just like all the families in our community, we've also endured a huge financial loss. Our school district is no different. We've invested in our staff when our campuses were closed. We paid insurance deductible in excess of $1 million and we lost ADA funding for students who haven't returned to their homes. As a board, we want our community to know that we as a board and our administrative team continues to work through our financial challenges and that we're doing everything possible to ensure the success of our district. I know Ms. Cook, Ms. Stansbury, thank you. I know y'all been working tirelessly to secure disaster relief from the state level and from FEMA at the national level, along with pursuing educational grants whenever possible. This evening we've heard a comprehensive assessment of our financial condition and the best recommendations our administration team can make considering the financial information they have to us today. And to our administrative team, I want you guys to know our commitment is to work hard. We ask you to please dil be diligent on your campus. And Ms. Cook and I had a conversation. There's a lot of wants that we know our staff wants. Uh, but there's real, realistically, and we need you guys to be the leaders out there to determine what is an actual need for us as we transition through this tough time. So with that said, we'll move to our next action item, which is to consider and approve the 2018-19 tax rate. We've heard the information on the proposed tax rate enclosed in your package. Get to here. Is the notice of the public meeting to discuss the tax rate, which is tonight, of course. And then an ordinance to set the tax rate. August 28, 2018, on this date, we, the Board of Trustees of the Arandis Pass Independent School District, hereby levy or set the tax rate on 100 graduation for the district for the tax rate of two, for the tax year 2018 at a total tax rate of 1.361 to be assessed and collected by the duly specified assessor and collector as follows. 1.117 for the purpose of maintenance and operation. 0.191 for the payment of principal and interest on debts and $1.361 total tax rate. Taxes are to be assessed and collected by the tax officials designated by the district. Do I have a motion to approve the recommended ordinance tax rate? Uh, I make a motion to approve the tax rate. A motion by Mr. Motion by administration. By Mr. Mollick, do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Richter. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is to consider and approve the budget amendment included in your board package. Is the information on that amendment? Are there any questions? There are no questions. Do I have a motion to approve the budget amendment as presented by administration? Mm -hmm. I have a motion by Ms. Diaz. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Branch. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item number six is to consider and approve construction change order for the Orenzis Pass High School Gym Project. Uh, Ms. Cook, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, uh, school board, board president, superintendent. Um, so I don't know if you got maybe a couple of drawings we, I sent over. Um, we had a, initially a year ago we did the project. We had a, a zero cost upgrade for the stadium seating. 
since that time, the contractor couldn't get the same deal on the state of the So the, the, that was the that was a uh, major additional cost for going to state of the So we just found this out about a couple weeks ago when they brought when they sent the proposal to us. We knew it might be a little increase, but it was it was uh, quite a bit more than we had anticipated. So um, so that's what we're facing at this point. And um, so if we go back to the bench seating, um, that, that's the other option that we can look at. Um, we do have um, three or four um, credit items that would could pay for the $14,000 upgrade on the stadium seating for those 50 seats. But, I mean, that would be just something you would have to decide on. And I, and I understand the, the tight budget. So we're looking at every little thing we can to, to reduce that cost. So if I read this correctly, the the change order just for the stadium seating is four thousand dollars. No, no, it's um, no. The total change is fourteen thousand dollars. Fourteen thousand dollars to go because they 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 have to add additional section for those seats, they have to add additional motor, so it got more complicated. And I don't know what happened on the bidding, but. That was not a zero item. All the other contractors had nine or ten thousand dollars to do that. For some reason, Marshall had zero. So when we went back to try to um, honor that, they, they wouldn't do that. So, so that's where we we are. Trustees, have any questions? For public information on the changes, it looks like we have some credits coming back to the district. <coughs> Intercom, credit back on roofing, credit back on interior metal roofs, and a credit back on a bleacher logo, which still was around $14,000. That's, that's basically a wash. Uh, just in my opinion, we, we've been very diligent in trying to make this as nice as we can and cost effective, and I believe this is an added feature that We'll add to that. Um, from my perspective, I would like to continue with the project as it, as it is. And well. Are these, come, I guess, what are, they, uh, what are they called? Changes <coughs> coming back to us? Are these guarantees or these estimates? No, these? This, is, this, is the, this, is the, this is the actual cost that would go to the contractor if we approve it. Uh, that would be the total cost, the, the, uh, the 14. I know, but we have. We have an estimate or oh. a guesstimate of things that are going to be coming back to us in a positive aspect. Right, are right, these, right. Are these the, solid or this the is The nine thousand is solid. The other ones, uh, the the one thousand is solid. The other two are, are those are guesstimates. They could be more. They could be. They, they should be right around that, that number. So we overestimated nine thousand dollars on an intercon system no. for the gym. No, we did. We had it in the gymnasium, but when we we. Um, we did the intercom to the high school. We took it out of the, the, the gym project and put it in the high school project since it's already been done. So they have to just, uh, we, we put the conduit in the, the box in the gym so that, that they'll be able to add on to it and they, we can put it in a different contract. So it's put in a different bid? Right. It was, put in bid. It, was in, it was in the bid that we, that we just, that just did for the high school. Yes, in the Charlie Marshall. So basically we just created a duplication. It's a good question, right? Well, I think we owe to our fans who give them the best product available. I think those bin, the, the bin seats were not that up to, I think, the, the stadium seats for the backs or for our home side. That, that upgrades a lot, and it's a lot better, a lot better for the home crowd to sit in during basketball games and volleyball games or anything else going on there. So. Any other questions? I have a motion by Mr. Stansbury to approve the change order. Second by Mr. Diasis. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. It's actually Mr. Rector that second. I'm sorry. At the record reflect, Mr. Rector was a second. And Ms. Diasis was opposed. Motion carries. Thank you, Todd.
Agenda number seven was to convene an executive session. I don't believe there was anything in the board packet unless you needed to visit with us. But there being no need on the executive session at this time, with it being 8 05, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody, and thank you, administration, for your hard work.